Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nilsson. This is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Today on In-Depth Outdoors, the roller coaster ride that is our season continues. And of course, that roller coaster really depends on the weather. If you can think back to November, we started off our season with incredibly cold, frigid temperatures that got us on the ice early. Now here in the last week, we've had temperatures across much of the ice belt uh, above 50 degrees for an extended period of time. That's caused some serious issues with ice conditions in the southern portion of the ice belt. Now here in Minnesota, we're still sitting pretty good. We've lost all of our snow and on a lot of lakes, there's been some issues with moving and shifting ice, but overall, I think we're gonna be okay. Now, of course, today I'm fishing with Joel Nelson and we're out near Detroit Lakes. We're actually fishing between Detroit Lakes and Fergus Falls. And before we hit the hotel last night, we did some scouting and what we found was a lot of standing water on the lakes near Detroit Lakes. So that gave us uh, the uh, idea that we should probably stick to a smaller lake, a smaller body of water just for safety purposes. When you get a lot of standing water like that, it is very difficult to safely travel on the ice because it's hard to judge the condition of cracks. So we're here on a small body of water, it's public water, and we're looking to get in on a great panfish bite. And we're excited because uh, although we did enjoy fishing in the warmer weather earlier in the week, Today, we've got a huge change in the barometer and temperature, and that typically spikes the bite, and we're excited about that. So it's Joel Nelson and I on a small lake chasing panfish. We're pretty sure we're gonna have a hot bite and get some great fish on the ice. Fish on. Little boy. Feels like a decent fish. Yeah, it sure looks good. He just come out of nowhere. I was watching uh, the ice chunks blow past at 35 miles an hour and- I can see him. It's a nice crappie. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Come on. Yeah. Ooh, glove going away. Pick that one up in the next county over. It's a real nice start. And that's what we're seeing here on the, the electronics on the uh, LX9. Joel, I think there's some big pike in here. We got some uh, wound marks on this one. <laughs> We might have to throw out a couple tip ups. That's a really nice start. What we're fishing today is uh, just small spoons, Flash Champ spoon and 1 16th ounce. It's so windy, I was thinking we'd have a hard time fishing jigs. So, started out with a perch colored spoon and nabbed me a really nice crappie. All right, we'll let that one go. Bye, buddy. Plastic or meat, James? I uh, threw on three spikes. All right. Three uh, Euro wiggler larvas. Euro larvae. And I got fish just piled up waiting. What I liked about that fish is he just enharled it. Here we go. <laughs> Good one, Joel? Yeah, I've been trying to keep play keep away from some of those smaller fish in the school and uh, oh, look at this it is a big fish. Just chunky, look at that thing. Beautiful fish, Joel. You know, James, I think that's why spoons are one of my favorite big gill type baits because I've got a screen full of fish, you do too, but not all of them are the ones we want to catch. This is our target and using those bigger spoons keeps those smaller fish away to some extent. So, Woo. man, that's awesome. I tell you, it does not feel awesome on your hand though. <laughs> it's the wind <laughs> that, that quick freezes everything. Man, alive. Even my rod tip is just a solid chunk of ice. I had a whole screen full of fish for literally almost 10 minutes on end and just trying to play keep away from those smaller fish and you, you can see it on, on the graph. The bigger fish show up as thicker marks so with this spoon you're going to be trying to entice those larger fish to come up through the group to 
get your offering and eventually you stick at it long enough, it'll happen. I don't know how you're presenting the bait, but for me it's see the fish come in and then just sit there and just pound that rod tip. Yep. Bang, 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 bang. And as soon as he starts to close, then just stop. You gotta hold it still for two reasons. One, to let them put it in their mouth, but the other, just to detect the strike with all this wind, it, uh, there's a lot of white noise going on in the end of your rod tip. How about I just catch this fish? <laughs> there we go. This one might be a crappie because it come up so fast, about eight feet. I was cleaning ice off my line. It's a good fish. Just a, just a decent gill. Oh, okay. You know, the, the ice is so clear, you get a pretty good look at them a couple feet down in the water yet. This technique is just kicking butt today. You know, I, I don't mind fishing little jigs, don't get me wrong, but when you can get fish on spoons like this, you got three hooks, bigger presentation, lots of weight there so the bait sinks real quick. It's just easier to fish in conditions like this. And of course, we do have the issue with lots of small fish in this body of water. So we're able to pre-screen, so to speak, for some of those little ones. Delivering power on demand with the push of a button. The new 50-volt lithium laser from StrikeMaster is capable of making short work of as many as 56 holes in 24 inches of ice on a single charge. Featuring many of the same components found in all of StrikeMaster's power augers, the lithium laser cuts no corners and delivers uncompromising durability. This winter, don't settle for anything less than the dependable StrikeMaster lithium laser. Ice fishing's first full-power, high-performance electric ice auger. <laughs> Two things about this bite that are really important. We got a lot of wind, so I'm fishing a very special rod. There we go. That's a nice fish. Fishing a very special rod for that purpose. This is a custom noodle rod. It's from Tuned Up, tuned up Custom Rods, and it's got a little bit of the tip clipped off. That's for situations just like today. It's a slightly shorter rod. It's a 28-inch rod. I can keep it tight to my body. It doesn't have the full flex of the noodle, and it's cut just a tiny bit short. So on windy days like today, I can both detect the bite, yet keep that rod tip protected from the wind so I can see what's going on. The other thing that's really important, jigging really close to the water line. If you've got a lot of line exposed to the open wind, let's say I'm up here jigging, all that wind is blowing the line, and I lose my ability to detect bites. But when I'm jigging, I'm keeping that sucker literally an inch off the water line, and that's really helping my bite detection. Man, I got a fish finder loaded up with gills right now. Got him, got him, got him. Here, let me clear that good fish for you. Good fish. Thank you. Yo. Man, this is a pie. This is a good fish. Oh, I'm losing my gloves. Grab that way. Yeah, Look yeah. at that. What a toad. <laughs> Heavy metal bluegills fishing those spoons. <laughs> getting some tank fish. That is a big fish. That's about as big a bluegill as I can put my hand around. That is a thicky. Look at that. <laughs> Such a nice bluegill. <laughs> and you know, it's obviously not a presentation using these little flash champ sm spoons where it'll only work in ideal conditions. I mean, we have got just a horrible cold front and these gills are still eating the heck out of those little spoons. They're a bit of a a very valuable resource in my opinion. Everybody loves catching big bluegills, but to keep doing that, you gotta do that once in a while. So I'll let that fish go. That's uh, three, four really, really big bluegills oh, today. My goodness. On some public waters. Yeah. I'm digging it. I am not, however, liking the way my hands feel right now. <laughs> Woo, I'm gonna go grab a, a little windbreak. Good idea. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, clear that deucer. What you got, Nelson? Man, something about these fish. I don't know what they're eating in here. I know a lot of the best, oh, look at that fish. A lot of the best bluegill fisheries have some sort of special forage, and I don't know if it's shrimp. I don't know what they're eating, but it's making them awful fat. <laughs> Jeez. I can barely get my hands around it. It's mm. just sick, Joel. Here he comes. Got him. 
There are so many fish packed in here right now. My oh. screen's full too. Oh, here it comes. Look at this thing. <laughs> Just a toad. <laughs> Check that one out, buddy. Oh, those little spoons are just dynamite in this situation. You know what we should try is we should try to put some plastic on there instead of fishing the uh, live bait. You know, just make it that much easier. I don't right. think it would matter much at all. No, I don't think it would either. I mean, that is a gill. That is a big one. It's a lipper. <sighs> all right, I'm gonna let him go. Man, working one. Fish. Yep, got him. <laughs> Do you really? It's that same school. Man, another just pig. <sighs> yep. This is one of the best days of bluegill fishing we've ever had. Yeah, it's it's official. I mean, right up there, top five for me of all time. That's just unbelievable. You know, James, to your point of barometer, you've talked a lot about what to look for. Well, that's one of the most common questions I get on In Depth Outdoors is not just what to look for, but where to look. and. Weather Underground has a great app and also a great site. A toad. I know, that's just insane. Weather Underground has not just a record of barometer, but it's got the barometric graph, plus it's got a barometric pressure forecast. So you can see how that thing is shaped, how it looks in the past, and then what it's gonna be. And that, that's the key to helping predict bites like we've got going right now. Well, like I've said, I mean, this is not typical. This yeah. is where everything kind of converges and comes <laughs> together perfectly. This is public water. I mean, if you look around, this bay we're fishing is punched out. I mean, there are holes everywhere. <sighs> yeah. There's hard houses out here. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is not an everyday occurrence because if it was, these fish would be gone. Gone, yeah. People would take them home. Uh, so the timing of this could not have been better. Right. And this is something that people can repeat. Once yep. I know what to look for, you can time your trips out here on the ice to maximize your catch, just knowing that when you see those huge swings coming off of, you know, extended high pressure uh, times, that's when these fish just really fire up. But not just bluegills, walleyes, right. perch. I mean, yeah. just about all fish are gonna react similarly. So, I mean, I wish like every day could be like <laughs> this. That's just not a reality. It can't be, all right. Honestly, this is one of the best days of bluegill fishing I've had in years. Yeah, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. The new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter feature a new look and unmatched protection from the elements. The fully insulated Pro XT 1200 features a 1200 denier shell built for extreme conditions, while the Thermal Top XT 650 features a 650 denier shell that locks in heat and eliminates condensation. All Extreme Thermal Shelters are built on Otter's legendary roto molded sled and proven oversized square tube frames. The all new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter, built tougher, stronger, smarter. There he goes. Boom, 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 big head pumps. Come on, come on. Oh, nice fish, nice fish, beautiful. That flash champ, the spoon I'm using, it's a 1 16th ounce flash champ, it's a VMC spoon. It is just putting the smack down on these big gills today. But what a nice gill. We've just been blessed here today with a bunch of fish like that. I'm gonna show you that bait. It's just a small brass bodied spoon. On one side, I've got it painted up like a perch, which makes sense for this body of water. There's lots of little perch in here. And on the back, it's that gold pattern. I just like that pattern in general. And that the gold color always does real well for me in bodies of water where the, the visibility isn't great. And that's certainly the case here. Tipping it with one little uh, larva on each uh, hook on that treble. And uh, that pretty much rounds it out. Very effective bait, and that's the 1 16th ounce. Perfect size for big bluegills and crappies. Come on up, guys. Oh, man, it's just been on fire. I can't stress it enough. This is one of the better bites maybe that I've ever been on. And I've been on some pretty, pretty hellacious bluegill bites over the years. Oh my gosh. Wow, <laughs> look at that. Look at, look at how far my thumbs can come up the side of his body. I mean, literally, that is a huge, huge gill. For gills like this, in my mind, they gotta go back. If you wanna keep some fish, you don't need to keep fish like this. Nice fish, Joel. This is special, and the more you can put back fish like this, the more you can ensure that comes. they'll be there the next time. Got him. 
God, this is just a beat down. It does not happen like this every day, obviously. We've had such a long stretch of consistently gloomy, cruddy weather, warm, and the fish just didn't bite real well. I tell you what, they are on fire right now. Look at that. Such a great bluegill bite, such a great technique and pattern. I really hope you give it a try. These small spoons are just a fantastic presentation for these big gills. Get him unhooked here. I think what I like about this, as much as catching the gills myself, is just watching Nelson. I mean, he just gets crazy for gills. His enthusiasm is infectious. All right, back you go. We are spoiled today. Doesn't happen this way all the time, that's for sure. Feel pretty lucky to be able to catch fish like this in conditions like this. It definitely makes it tolerable when you're catching fish like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've been working this mark for a while. You're on a roll, man. This fish is good. Look at that rod bend. <laughs> oh wow. Yep. My goodness. Oh. <laughs> My biggest fish of the day, <laughs> look at that thing. They don't even look real at this point. <laughs> I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do James's uh, two hand trick and uh, oh yeah. That fish is all of 10 inches plus. My biggest gill of the year. I, uh, I could fish all year and not top that and be extremely happy. That is a monster gill. This fish's gotta go back. Craftsmanship and precision are just words until you add driving passion and a knowledge of what defines rod building excellence. Tuned up custom rods are built with a perfect blend of rod balance and action. A truly custom experience achieved only with the highest quality materials. From the handle to the last guide and every thread wrap in between, it's these components along with an attention to detail that makes our customized rods a tuned up custom. I'll put my gloves back on and watch the rod tip while I do because the water column is just loaded with fish. Uh, he just hit it. Got him. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to work. Can't even get your gloves on before you hook up your next one. That's a little bit better one. Probably should talk a little bit about the, uh, the gear we're using today. Definitely pretty sweet setup for fishing these spoons. It's got that noodle tip like we use on a lot of the rods when we're fishing panfish, but it's got a little bit more heft to it. It's designed to fish heavier baits, just like the spoons we're using today. It'd work great with real small jig and wraps, spoons, or real heavy tungsten jigs. Uh, you know, where the noodle sometimes can be overloaded by those larger baits, this rod, it's called the Bull Whip, Tuned Up Customs, is designed specifically for this type of application. So it's been a great rod so far. I've really enjoyed fishing it. And then we have a uh, 500 Sedona with three pound test line. Just a great setup. Gonna have enough uh, line strength to handle, you know, the biggest bluegill or crappie. And as you've seen, Joel's tangled with uh, at least a couple pike today. I'm keeping my bait almost five feet above bottom and that's doing a couple things for me. There's fish all over the screen, but most of them are concentrated kind of in that bottom two, three feet. The temptation is to drop your jig down right above those fish, jig them up, catch them and bring them in. But that's not how I'm catching some of these better fish. I'm keeping it way up high like I'm doing right now. And I got a fish that's just staring at me hard. <laughs> I don't think it's a bass, James. Nice job. I have been working this mark, James, for minutes. Minutes and minutes and minutes. And it was totally worth it. <laughs> Look at that fish. Woo! Big bluegills are in my blood. There is nothing I like better than a big bluegill bite. It's technical, it's challenging. I can vouch for that. <laughs> Everything about it, uh, it's really reaffirming when it, when it all finally works out because my goodness, that is a trophy. I don't care where you are, that's a big fish. He was barely hooked, James. I was just holding the fish and the, the hook fell out of his face. <laughs> Back you go. Whew. I have one more down there, James. They came in twos and threes. Yeah, I got a group of them over here. And I, 
like I was saying, I thought that was a bass. I, that was a big, big mark. I'm going to get you. Here he comes. Got him. This is a good one. Good fish. I hear drag. Heck yeah. It's gonna be a good one. <laughs> there goes my glove. I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look at that. <laughs> Just a toad. Oh, oh. That's a big fish. <laughs> Man. We have caught so many giant fish today. You know, we can really feel the wind picking up now. The barometer has definitely dropped, and that's really triggered these big fish to feed. I don't want anybody to think that this is what you can expect in this body of water every day. It just doesn't happen that way. But Joel and I have been talking now for a couple of days about this kind of perfect storm where we've had such a run of warm weather, and we saw this big front coming in, this huge change in weather patterns. We knew we'd have some Great opportunities at some big fish. I'm gonna let this one go. Yeah. Man. You know, I don't know if you took a look at what the barometer peaked at prior to this front coming in, but I know it was really high. 30 and a half, 30.6, some of the highest that I've seen in, at least this winter so far. And right now it's 29.9, and uh, that's a big drop. I mean, it went from one of the higher readings that you're gonna see uh, for this time of the year down to 29.9. And you know, everybody always wants to know what kind of barometer conditions are you looking for? And really for us, it just seems to be a change. Right. You know, um, I would prefer to see a falling barometer. Now on the back side of this front, you can count on there being a very high pressure response. Right. You're gonna get clear skies, typically high winds, and those bites can be very tricky. Right. So we're definitely making our efforts on this side of that arrival of that high pressure system. So, you know, not everybody out there has the flexibility that Joel and I do with regards to getting out on the water and timing bites. But if you spend any time on the weather, you know, apps or, or, or on, you know, online on AccuWeather.com, you can get a pretty good feel for what's coming when you see these storm fronts. So you get a very good idea when you can maximize your chances at big fish out here on the ice. Today, Monday, was that day where we could see those temperatures dropping, basically being cut in half, yeah. and the barometer just falling off the shelf. So this bite that we were able to put together today was a combination of using the right baits, obviously, we've got a healthy fishery, and then just timing it for when that barometer was making its move, and the results really speak for themselves. You're a bluegill guy, I know it. Yeah. But I've it. rarely seen you as happy as you were today. <laughs> All smiles, man. I got the joker grin. It's just wired in my face. <laughs> I lost count of the number of 10-inch gills that you caught today. Uh, so several. I have no idea where we're going next. Uh, definitely uh, enjoyed today. Now, by the time you watch this show, ice conditions will have improved dramatically. We do have some cold weather coming now. That's going to firm everything right back up. So I don't expect that anybody's going to lose any significant time out there on the ice you know, from this warm front that we had. So uh, from Joel and I, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you learned a few things. If you're on a lake where you've got lots of little fish and you're having a hard time getting those big fish to bite, definitely try the spoons. It can make a huge difference. So from Joel and I, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Warm them up, bud. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.